Yeah. Thanks a lot and thanks for inviting us here. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tiziana Mazzini and I'll present the results of a landscape analysis that we have been conducting in the past few months to, with WHO and, uh, and the FDA uh, to assess the utility and the feasibility um, and the added value of the Cure ID app platform for our IoT of infectious diseases, including um, the uh, entities. Um, so I'll go very quickly on the first few slides because Natalie and, and Heather already touched on, on all these uh, points and I want to leave enough room for the, for the discussions. I just want to, to underline that WHO recognizes that a significant proportion of currently used medicines of several entities, tuberculosis and other IDs are repurposed. Here in the box you just see a few examples, but for, exa for example, just to make a very extreme case in tuberculosis, almost all all the drugs that are being used are, are basically repurposed, even though uh, they've been used, used by, by clinicians for so long that they basically became the, the standard of um, the standard of, of care, the, the, the normal practice for clinicians. Um, as Natalie already pointed out, in the absence of new compounds, repurposing has several advantages, and we all know that drug discovery and development uh, it can take a long, uh, a long, long time, and that there is a high failure rate um, as long as uh, the drugs move on uh, into the pipeline. So this is why it's very important while looking for new compounds, for example, new chemical entities or new uh, drugs with new mechanism of actions, which, which may help, for example, to, um, to um, against drug resistance strains, um, it's important to focus in parallel on drug repurposing too, which, because this can help uh, deliver better and, and safer and also more affordable treatment options for patients for all the reasons that uh, Natalie already uh, explained. Um, I will just comment briefly on these slides because um, you see that I added a question mark here, trial versus uh, other patient data sources. Well, is it really trials against or versus other patient data sources? I, I don't think it is. Of course, carrying out clinical trials is extremely important, but it's not always uh, being done or it's not always feasible, specifically for a um, very group uh, of patients, very often pregnant women, children, and so on. So is this really one thing against the other? Um, well, it's not. I mean, the, the two approaches should be uh, should be um, carried out in parallel, and and they should not be seen as uh, one uh, as an alternative to the other, but rather as complementary approaches. Um, in tuberculosis, for example, where the uh, where the R and D pipeline has been delivering only very recently uh, the first two drugs approved for MDRTD uh, in the past 40 years, um, relying on on pooled data sets from observational studies or meta analyses uh, from individual patient data has been. Uh, has been informing basically the, the uh, WHO guideline development in the, in the past uh, few years. And this article from The Lancet is, uh, is just one example. Um, so for all these reasons, uh, the WHO and the US FDA decided to, to establish a collaboration because we believe that the systematic collection of, of real world experience through online databases like QID can be really uh, informative and support uh, potential regulatory approval, but also WHO uh, guideline development and uh, national policies development. This is the reason why we established this collaboration, which is focused around on, on the WHO perspective, uh, trying to understand uh, how this approach and specifically the QRID platform can be optimally used by uh, practitioners facing uh, challenges, uh, challenging clinical situations. So as I will explain in a minute, this means to understand which disease areas this approach is most needed in terms of, of course, uh, first of all, the public health needs, but also where it can be uh, more feasible to collect a relevant, relevant number of case reports that can be um, as informative as possible but also in parallel trying to map out what's already being done out there in specific um, uh, disease areas. So for example, technologies that clinicians may already be uh, using. 
So this slide summarizes the methodology that we use for the landscape analysis. On the on your left hand side, you can see a um, number of disease areas that we we started from. Um, <clears throat> we started investigated investigating. This doesn't mean that uh, all the other disease areas are not relevant, but we just needed to start somewhere because both the desk review and the key informant interviews took quite quite a lot of time. So this is just an initial set of, of diseases that we, we considered. And as you see, a few uh, entities were also included in the initial list, which are the ones highlighted um, in bold. So after selecting this uh, preliminary list, we carried out a desk review and we we also had interviews with many national and international experts in uh, in uh, each of the uh, relevant disease areas. Uh, unfortunately, due, due to the COVID outbreak, we, we couldn't uh, finalize the analysis, but we uh, hope to be able to finalize it in, in the coming few weeks. Um, some of the criteria we used to prioritize the disease areas where to focus the dissemination of, of cure ID are, um, are listed here, even though they are not uh, all of them. But of course, there's the need to look for uh, suitable treatment options, which are uh, safe and effective. And for diseases for which these treatment options are currently not available, or maybe they're not uh, suitable. But also, we try to collect as much information as possible about initiatives that are already ongoing that could be complementary to, uh, to Cure ID as we, we have no intention to reinvent the wheel. Um, it's also important to understand whether there are enough opportunities to disseminate uh, the application and make sure, make sure that um, as many clinicians as possible uh, use the app so that, um, that we collect a relevant uh, number of case reports. Um, so the, the presence of an engaged disease-specific community with working groups, workshops, conferences, which are happening quite frequently is uh, particularly important. Of course, something that I didn't list here because I, I think it's, it's quite um, obvious, but I, I wanted to mention it very briefly, is it's something is, which is very important is that um, if we prioritize a certain disease area, it's very important that clinicians in their daily practice do try medicines that do not have approved indications for, for, that, specific, um, for that specific disease. For example, they could be medicines approved for other diseases or medicines which are still in development, for example. Um, and there are other criteria, for example, the fact that um, um, whether, let's say, some disease, uh, specific diseases are treated by specialists or not, or for example, by specialized, specialized centers. So this is very important, again, for the dissemination uh, part of the app, which uh, is essential to collect a, re a relevant number of, of uh, case report. Now, today I will focus the remaining part of my presentation on NTDs, but should you have any question on the additional uh, disease areas that are listed here, please do not hesitate to, to reach out. Um, so uh, I will start from uh, mycetoma and in particular from eomycetoma. Um, why it's important to collect case reports through uh, Cure ID for this uh, disease area? Well, uh, first of all, it's very relevant from a public health uh, perspective because of the lack of safe and effective treatment options um, for eomycetoma. Indeed, the cure rates are uh, very low at the moment. They often involve treatment with uh, with antifungals and surgery, and the treatment is uh, usually quite long with an average duration of, of 12 months. And um, as you probably know, uh, DNDI, and as Natalie, I think she, she mentioned it earlier, uh, DNDI is conducting a trial in collaboration with the Mycetoma Research Center uh, in Sudan, and the results of the trial will be available in, uh, in two years. Um, Another uh, positive aspect of prioritizing mycetoma for this dissemination of the app is the fact that the causative agents are endemic in, a select, in selected countries and that the Mycetoma Research Center in, uh, in Khartoum in Sudan is a, a worldwide recognized uh, institution working on mycetoma. Very often clinicians um, uh, call or send emails to this uh, research center to ask questions. So the fact that there is a sort of centralization of the requests could really help to collect a relevant number of, of case reports. 
Um, we still have some not really concerns, I think I used the wrong term here, but pending questions, um, which we, we would still like to investigate more closely. First of all, um, we are aware that not too much repurposing is going on in Sudan, where most uh, patients failing itraconazole undergo surgery while continuing treatment. So we are currently uh, seeking additional information on whether this is the, the, the practice also in other uh, endemic countries. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the treatment is very long and it has less definite treatment outcomes and also a high rate of loss to follow up. Um, and while the fact that QID is a rather um, simplified case report form should and will encourage clinicians hopefully to, to input case reports because they don't need too much time uh, for it, it may also mean that the case report form would, be, would need to be adapted to ad adequately capture the information on uh, mycetoma patients in an informative way. Um, as I mentioned, uh, probably I didn't mention it before, but one of the aspects that we are also looking at is whether there is um, reliable diagnostics in place for each of the disease areas, because QRID associates the, the treatment with the treatment outcome. So it's very important that there is this connection. While for mycetoma, the diagnosis is, uh, is quite complex and very often it's based on, on clinical examination. So what are we going to do next? Um, while mycetoma seems to be an ideal candidate for the dissemination of QRID, we are still planning to collect additional information on the uh, drug repurposing practices in other endemic country, countries. And uh, um, we also plan additional discussions on the potential use of QRID to help address uh, the gap between preclinical and clinical stages. As we know very often, drugs which are investigated in the preclinical stages are not translated into to clinical studies. So we are planning to have discussions with relevant stakeholders to, uh, short, uh, on shortlisting promising candidates in preclinical stages and potentially test them in small and focused uh, pilot studies with the information and the outcomes uh, potentially being stored in case reports in, uh, in QRID. And these pilot or uh, studies or um, more focused studies could of course be uh, informative for uh, bigger and broader clinical trials. I just want to also take the opportunity to inform all of you that the WHO together with the, with the US FDA, with Heather and others, we will organize a virtual workshop specifically on mycetoma to discuss all the points that I uh, touched upon today. This will be held on the 10th of July. It's a Friday from uh, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. CT. Uh, so if you are interested to participate in the discussion, please uh, get in touch with us for uh, more details and we'll be happy to, um, to give you any information. Um, so on, uh, on top of mycetoma, we also started to look at other um, at other fungal infections, in particular um, at chromoblastomycosis and other deep mycosis. Now for chromoblastomycosis, the, the analysis is still um, is still ongoing. Uh, we st as I mentioned before, COVID unfortunately didn't help with this. Um, but it seems to be the case that we will have, we will have similar issues to, to what we have been discussing with, with mycetoma. Um, someone we talked to also uh, encouraged us to, to look for partners who are more experts in the dermatology space to help again with the dissemination of the app. Um, I also want to take the opportunity to mention that, uh, as mentioned before, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, so we started to get in touch with initiatives that are already ongoing um, in particular in this specific disease area, fungiscope, which probably most of you are very familiar with. Um, and they were very interested to link with us and to make sure that the two initiatives are uh, complementary and uh, well connected. The, um, the idea behind fungiscope is very similar. Um, it's very similar to QRID, but for example, their case reports form is much more detailed. They focus on a specific uh, subgroup of, uh, of fungal infection. So there is room for collaboration. Again, there's, there doesn't have to be competition, but rather uh, collaboration. And this is something we are uh, working on. Um, for leishmaniasis, um, 
we had initially preliminary shortlisted, uh, especially visual leishmaniasis, um, uh, considering also the potential complementarity with, between QID and the work that is currently done by the IDDO on, uh, on VL, collecting and analyzing clinical trial data uh, worldwide. Um, however, from, from the few interviews that we uh, held with the VL experts, it, it became apparent that the treatment for VL is rather standardized. Uh, clinicians have basically a specific, uh, not specific, but um, a rather um, yeah, like a, a box of, of drugs to use and specific protocols they can look at. Um, and the experts that we, we told to, uh, who know also a lot about what, cl what clinicians do in the field, uh, believe that even when clinicians experience uh, patients with, with treatment failures, they, they basically know already what to do because the, the, the protocols are uh, rather standardized. Um, also, we heard that even though there, there seems to be quite a lot of literature about people who have tried other uh, medications for VL, it doesn't seem to look uh, too promising and so far it hasn't really uh, delivered anything uh, useful. Um, it's also true that there is a lot of R&D effort going on, on on VL, especially in the in the late stage of the of the pipeline at the moment. So, considering all these factors, we um, we decided not to prioritize VL at this stage of the project of the project. Uh, but we were also encouraged to look at cutaneous cutaneous leishmaniasis, um, which is an area where clinicians may be trying repurpose drugs for complicated cases. So. So this is something that we plan to do in, in the near future. Um, so in the last part of my presentation, I will briefly talk about dengue and chicken guinea. Zika is mentioned here, even though it's not an NTD, but um, the experts basically uh, in dengue and ch chicken guinea are often also the clinicians who, um, who are experts in Zika or who handle Zika cases. So that's why I decided to mention it here. Um, from a public health perspective, well, there's no specific treatment options for these diseases, no guideline, no WHO guidelines available, and most guidelines out there focus on uh, uh, pain uh, relief strategies and uh, recommending paracetamol or other uh, painkillers to control the, sim uh, the symptoms. Uh, from the interviews we had, it emerged that especially clinicians treating dengue are actually trying medicines approved for other indications, but that the information is not collected systematically, which seems to be the ideal scenario for uh, the dissemination of QID. From the point of view of the, of the dissemination, we also learned that the uh, community of clinicians treating uh, dengue is pretty large and active, and that we could also have the possibility to disseminate the, uh, the use of the app uh, through some courses and events that WHO uh, held um, a few times per year in, uh, in several countries. Um, regarding some of the pending questions that we have, uh, so we would ideally like to collect additional evidence that clinicians, especially uh, those seeing patients uh, for dengue, do try to use repurposed medicines uh, so that the, the repurposed uh, practice is, is quite widespread um, and that the focus isn't only on the clinical manage management slash uh, supportive care for, for these uh, infections which, for example, seems to be the case for a uh, chicken guinea. Um, so for the way forward in general, considering that dengue is becoming uh, an emerging threat with, with more uh, outbreaks happened in, uh, in 2019, uh, dengue seems to be uh, a good candidate at the moment to prioritize the dissemination of QID. Uh, one area which is completely neglected, it's uh, in terms of drugs which are available or treatment options and uh, clinical attention in general is dengue in pregnant women. So we are thinking to focus our attention particularly on that. And uh, in the future, we could also consider adapting QID to collect information about uh, patient management and supportive care. Uh, this would, would need uh, some 
adaptation of the case reports in QID, but as it seems to be uh, extremely relevant for these disease areas, this is something that we would be happy to, to consider. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, given that the community around these three disease areas is um, pretty much the same, we could also think about expanding the dissemination efforts to Zika and, uh, and chicken guinea. Um, so last but not least, um, as the analysis is still ongoing, um, we would be very happy to hear from you whether you have uh, ideas on uh, additional disease areas in the NTD space, but also beyond that, that we should consider, considering all the criteria and all the challenges and added values that I just described. If you have any idea in mind or any relevant disease areas where you think that collecting case reports could be very relevant and, and informative please get in touch with us and we can uh, we can have a call or organize a um, uh, zoom um, teleconference or um, and so on um, and also we we welcome um, any feedback you may have on dissemination strategies so for example events webinars workshops or people that you think we we could get in touch with uh, to to help spread uh, the voice about cure ID and uh, um, and this uh, project in general. Thanks a lot.